So the unit is called understanding the organizational environment. When we look at organizations today, they operate in an environment that helps them to ensure that they are competitive when it comes to the business operations. So for businesses to survive, they must be able to understand what is happening in the environment around them. And that is why when you look at companies that are doing good, they have been able to tap on the issue of the environment. Remember, competition is a reality and competition is happening, whether you like it or not. And that is why we have superior companies coming in, giving us better um, bargaining power and tapping on the market share of customers. So once you understand this as an organization, it becomes easier for you to be able to to navigate the various issues within the organization. So this topic basically will enlighten you on the understanding of the various issues that happen in the environment of business. So our first topic will be introduction to organizational environment. Here we will be able to understand some of the various terms that are used in the environment. Then we shall also be able to understand the importance of understanding this environment. Why do we need to understand the business environment? Because it is very important to have a department that has the sole responsibility of analyzing the environment so that they can give advice to the management on the best place to start or run an existing business. Then also we need to understand the factors that will influence the organizational environment. And when we talk about factors here, we are talking about two major factors, and those factors are the internal factors, which are within the business, and the business is able to control. And also we have the external uh, factors, and these are factors that the business has little or no control. For example, when you look at the political environment, the business cannot survive without adapting on the political environment, which is affecting the business. Remember last year we have had an election and the political environment affected many businesses. Some businesses were even forced to, to close down. And other external environment that might affect the business may include things like the economy, economical factors. We can also talk about ecological factors. For example, issues of the pandemic in 2020 that affected how businesses operated. Then the second uh, chapter will be the foundation of organizational environment. And here we will be able to understand some of the theories that have been developed over time to try and explain the business environment or the organizational environment. We also be talking about the types of organizational environment that exist. And here we can look at environments like the micro environment, the macro environment, and how they affect the business. Then we shall also look at the dimensions of organizational environment we shall be able to understand the dimension or the various uh, aspects of organizational environment. Then chapter three will be organizational behavior. Remember within the organization, we have a pattern of behavior that has been there over time. Look at a company like Safaricom, for example. There is a culture that they have and that culture forms the basis of their behavior how they carry themselves. Another company is a company like Kenya Airways. There's a way when you go to Kenya Airways, there's a certain culture that they have over time. And here also you'll be able to learn the human behavior and what affects or influences the human behavior. Why do some people behave the way they do behave? And when you look at um, uh, individual behavior, there's a way that individual behavior affects the business. 
For example, if employees are not motivated, then it means at the end of the day, these employees will not work towards achieving the set goals within the organization. Therefore, it is always important as much as you want to make profits as an organization, you also need to ensure you're looking for how people behave within the organization and what triggers people to behave in a certain way when it comes to the operations within the organization. And that's why in every organization that you go in today, you find that we have a department which is called the Human Resource Department. Mm -hmm. So Human Resource has the sole responsibility of planning the human capital. And human capital here, we are talking about the employees who are considered as one of the major or the biggest assets within the organization. And their main responsibility here is to train employees and develop them so that they become better versions of themselves. They also are in charge of recruiting and selecting and at the same time, appraising employees based on their performance. Then the other thing that we will look at here is the goal of organizational behavior. What do we need to achieve in terms of in implementing successful behavior within the organization? Then we are also looking at key factors that might affect the nature of organizations. For example, when you look at internal organization, what are some of the issues that might affect the internal organization and how people work within the organization? For example, we can talk about infrastructure within the organization. If you go to an organization that still uses manual transactions, the employees will be overwhelmed when it comes to the, the functions that they're supposed to do. But when you look at an organization that has successfully implemented ICT, those organizations are very successful. Then uh, we shall also look at the various models of organizational behavior. Chapter four, we will talk about the types of organization. We have different types of organization. And when we look at these different types of organizations, we are also looking at how they are owned. For example, look at a sole proprietor. A sole proprietor is a business that is owned by an individual. Today, you can decide to start a business. And if you decide to start that business, by virtue of starting the business, you automatically become a sole proprietor. Then we also have other businesses like partnership business. This is where you now enter into a partnership with either your friends or your colleagues at, at a certain level of engagement. Then uh, we also have uh, other forms of business. For example, we can look at um, companies where we have limited, public limited companies and private companies. Public limited companies are companies that are owned by the public at large. You also have individual or uh, uh, private limited companies. These are companies that are owned by uh, individuals who come together to form a company. Then also in forms of business also, we have these businesses that are called cooperative societies. These are business, businesses that are started by members, members who maybe have a common interest. For example, look at a cooperative society that uh, deals with the transportation. They come together and start a business or a corporation. And that is why when you look at the Kenyan market nowadays, we have the various cooperative societies. For example, in Nairobi, we have Embasava, we have, uh, we have uh, these other ones like Double uh, M, Kenya Bus, I don't know Meru Mkonagani. I'm not from Meru. Oh. oh, Nazarene. No. The main campus is Nazarene. Oh, you have another main campus? Uh, 
Ukokoi to campus ya town, Nairobi town. Ini Kurongai. Oh, Nironga. Oh, Nazarene, Nazarene. Oh, I, I'm confusing Nazarene with the Kenu. Huh? It's okay, it's okay. I now understand. Then you have different business sectors. For example, we have the public sector. And these are a sector that basically fully uh, run by the government. We also have the private sector. And we also have another sector called the third sector. And the third sector will include the NGOs, non-governmental organizations. Then chapter five, we will also be talking about the procurement organization and structure. Remember procurement is very critical and people normally confuse procurement with supply chain management. Procurement is just a small component of supply chain management. But in uh, procurement is what people uh, relate with, supply chain management most of the time. For example, if you ask a student today, what do you want to do in, uh, when you finish your high school? They will always say procurement. But if you, do, you ask them well, what is supply chain, they don't understand. But supply chain is uh, broader and it is the umbrella of uh, uh, procurement. So here we will talk about the different models of procurement. And uh, here basically we will be understanding more about the methods that are used in procurement. For example, we can talk about the open tendering method. We can talk about direct procurement. We can talk about um, post accounts and other methods of procurement. Mm -hmm. We also have direct, yes? Mm. We also have direct and indirect procurement. Organization structure for procurement function. So procurement can be organized in various functions and therefore we can have the functional procurement structure or any other structure, maybe divisional structure and others. We shall also be able to understand the various functions and responsibilities of various uh, players in procurement. For example, what is the function of a procurement manager? What is the function of an, a procurement officer? What is the function of a warehouse manager? Things like that. We shall also talk about consortium buying. And consortium buying is a very common form of buying where companies with similar interest come together for purposes of buying. And the main purpose of coming together is to be able to benefit from what is called economies of scale and get discounts at the end of the day. Then we shall also talk about procurement as an internal service provider. So for many businesses to survive, we must have the aspect of procurement within those organizations. Because procurement is one of the components that will help an organization to maximize their potential when it comes to issues of profits and when it comes to issues of reduction of, of cost within the organization. If you get a company that has organized its procurement well, then that company is doing good. But when you find that people in procurement are just uh, geared towards what they are going to gain, personal gains, then you find that those companies normally fail a lot of uh, all the time. Look at companies like Uchumi that they have gone down. Companies like Nakumat. Remember Nakumat? Yes. Or you were not born during that time? I was born, I was born. Uh, so Nakumat <laughs> went down, uh, Uchumi went down, and other companies like Taskis. And one of the reasons basically is the issues of procurement and lack of accountability. Then organizational complexity, we also look at that. Chapter six, we are going to talk about the types of markets and market theories. Remember we are operating in a market. And when you talk about market, we are talking about a certain space within which a business operates. And these markets can either be a monopoly market where we only have one player who is going, who is benefiting in that market. 
Or sometimes you can also have this other one, which is called monopsony, where we only have one key buyer of a particular product. Then the other the forms of um, markets, we can have a perfect competitive uh, comp competition. Also, we also have the other forms of market like uh, oligopoly and uh, uh, perfect competition. Let me say my own. You ain't getting competition again. The other form of market that we have, you may say my monopoly. The Mesema oligopoly, the Mesema perfect competition. Then in the Mesal, but you are to take figure. Then uh, types of market competition, we shall also talk about that, and the various theories or market theories, and the impact of market competition in procurement and supply. Chapter seven. We shall talk about stakeholder management. We shall be able to understand who is a stakeholder. And uh, a simple definition of a stakeholder is any organization or individuals that are affected by business decisions. For example, a supplier is a key stakeholder because the decision that the organization will make will either make the supplier or break the supplier. For example, customers, these are stakeholders. Shareholders are stakeholders. The government is a stakeholder. So any decision that the organization will make will affect the business, whether you like it or not. And that is why we always say, when making decisions, you will need to invite all the stakeholders so that they will be part and parcel of the business. Then uh, why do we need stakeholders? We also need to understand why we need the stakeholders. Then uh, sources of customer feedback. Remember, if you don't get feedback, then it means your business is not doing well. Either a positive feedback or a negative feedback. And we also always encourage organizations to embrace feedback because they will help improve the operations of the company. Then uh, the other thing also, so how can we get feedback from customers? We can either send emails or do questionnaires or even do interviews so that we get the feedback of customers, which is very, very important. Or we can also have suggestion box within the organization. Then uh, stakeholder relationship management, how then do you manage these stakeholders so that they realize your dream or the goal of the organization? Then chapter eight, we shall talk about environmental analysis. Here we are going to analyze the environment and we have various tools that can help us analyze the environment. And one of the common tools that is there within the organization is the, uh, what we call the SWOT analysis which is used to analyze both the internal and the external environment. We also have other tools like the Pestel and others, the BCG model also, things like that. Then we shall also look at the dimensions of environmental analysis and the various tools that are used during environmental analysis. Then the last, Chapter will be the emerging issues and trends in organizational environment. Here we will understand what are some of the issues that are there that have affected how business operates. For example, the common emerging issue that has been there over time is the issue of globalization, where companies nowadays want to compete globally. And as a result, they are looking for other markets within the continent or outside the continent of Africa. Then there also other issue of ICT, which is very common. Companies nowadays are embracing ICT as a competitive advantage so that they will be able to reach as many customers as possible. And that is why we have issues like the e-commerce where 
Nowadays, you don't need to go to China physically. You can just have a, your laptop and go to China inside your laptop and buy something from China and bring it within within hours and that thing will be in Kenya. Then the issue of green procurement also is very common or sustainable procurement. Nowadays, as much as companies want to produce, they produce, but they don't want to affect the environment because there has been an emphasis on sustainability of the environment. Then maybe the last uh, emerging issues that we can uh, also look at when we reach there is the issue of um, uh, total quality management. Remember, quality is very key. It's better you give customer quality because once you give the customer the quality, they will always refer other customers who will come to your organization and will be able to increase your sales as an organization. Any question? Before we continue, Hello, any question before we continue? Um, introduction to organizational environment. Remember I said many businesses operate in an environment and this environment will either make the business grow or will make the business go down. And that is why in organizations, they always have what is called a market analysis, where they go outside and try to analyze what their other, other, other businesses are doing or their competitors are doing. But before we dive into understanding what is the environment, we have various terms that are used very common when we are talking about organizational environment. And one of the term is alienation. Alienation is the experience of being isolated from a group or an activity to which one should belong or in which one should be involved. Sometimes you might be isolated from a certain group. And if that is what happens, then you can say that you have been alienated from that group. You have been isolated or separated from that group. Then uh, the other very important term is called ethics. And ethics are morals or principles, moral principles that govern the behavior or the conduct of an activity. Remember in procurement, we have our own procurement ethics. And this is the moral behavior that you are supposed to do within the organization. For example, if you enter the organization, you are not supposed to steal. But what happens in organizations? People take advantage of uh, the system and they want to steal. Therefore, ethics tries to explain the morals that one needs to have for purposes of ensuring that everything within the organization is up and running. And that is why when you go to uh, organizations, you find that they have a code of conduct. And this is a booklet that they have that explains what you're supposed to do and what you're not supposed to do as an employee of a certain organization. Then you have executive managers. This is a team of individuals at the highest level of management of an organization. When you look at the levels of management of organization, you find that we have the highest level of management, which is normally referred to as the strategic level. Then you have the business level. Then we have the operational level. So the executive managers are normally at the highest level because they are the ones who make critical decisions about the organization, the future. Then we have first line managers. These are entry level managers who ensure that employees are productive 
and effective in performing the work of the department to meet organizational goal. So these are line managers. For example, let's assume you are working in a certain organization as a procurement officer. Then it means as a procurement officer, you are reporting to somebody, let's say your manager. So your manager is your line, your line manager. So your first line manager. In the event you make a decision, you have to consult your first line manager to help you make that decision. Then we have industrial competitiveness. This is the ability to provide products and services more effectively and efficiently than competitors. Remember in the space of the business, you are not alone. Every time you want to be the best than your competitor. And that is why you normally do benchmarking so that you try to copy the best in the industry. So industrial competitiveness allows you to have a better ability than your competitor. Then we have long range planning. This is the process of setting goals that outline the path for the company's future. Because you are talking about long range. Long range, it means you're looking at the future of the company. And therefore you have to set goals that are in line with the future of that organization. Then we have macro organizational behavior. It, this it studies how organizations move in the market and how their strategies regarding employees and leadership affect the performance of the entire organization. Remember when you talk about macro environment, we are talking about a bigger environment which is outside the organization. And this environment is an environment that will affect the business, whether you like it or not. And the business has little or no control over such environments. Therefore, macro organization behavior are behavior that are outside the organization and can affect even the leadership of that organization. Let's look at an example where uh, the president has decided to bring a policy. For example, the 3% policy that they want to implement on housing levy. This policy is going to affect the many companies. But because the CEOs and the managers that do not have control over this decision, they just have to do it. But this will affect even the, the leadership and the strategies that the organizations are going to use. And that is why most uh, firms have not supported the 3% house lady. Then we have management. This is the process of planning, organizing, directing, and controlling the activities of employees in combination with other resources to accomplish organizational objective. So management is more about planning. What are you planning? You're planning your resources. What are you organizing? You're organizing your human capital and organizing the resources that are going to be used. And once you organize the resources, you have to direct those resources. For example, you have to direct human capital towards a certain uh, activity so that they will do that activity and you also be able to control the performance so that you don't underperform, but you maintain your standards as an organization. So performance here is very critical when it comes to management. And that is why they organize those resources to ensure that they are able to meet their organizational objectives. Then we have micro-organizational behavior. These are behaviors or studies which focus on individual and group dynamics within the organization. So micro-organization behavior tends to look at the internal organization and how well the internal organization can be able to, to support the business.
Okay, the other thing that we are going to talk about today is the issue of middle management. Remember we talked about the top level management. We have the middle level management and the lower level management. And the middle management is the managers in an organization at a level just below that of the senior executives. Then we have organizational theory. A theory tends to explain a certain phenomena. So organization theory is the study of organization design and organization structure, relationship or, of organization with their external environment and the behavior of managers and workers within an organization. So theory tries to explain what happens in organizations so that you will be able to understand the genesis of some of the behaviors within the organization. Then we have organization behavior. This is the study. Organization behavior, the study of the action of and attitude of individuals and groups towards one another and towards the organization as a whole. So organization behavior is what happens within the organization that shapes the individual behavior. For example, when you look at the culture, when you look at how people do things within the organization will affect how individuals behave. For example, if today you get an opportunity to work for Safaricom, when you go to Safaricom, there's a way you will be introduced to that culture. But when you go to another organization, you realize what is happening in this organization is very different from what is happening in this other organization. So different organizations have different cultures, which affects just a minute. Sorry for the interruption. Um, then the other one is organizational design. This is a formal methodology that identifies these functional aspects of workflow, procedures, functional systems, and realize them to fit the current business goal and develop plans to implement change. So design basically gives you the workflow, what you are expected to do within the organization. And it shapes many activities that helps to achieve certain things within the organization or certain goals within the organization. Then we have organization processes, organizational processes. So remember a process is a series of steps that will help you to achieve something. So organization processes, these are activities that establish the business goals of the organization and develops processes, products, and resources, assets, which when used will help achieve the business goals. For example, let me use an example of procurement. When you want to buy something in an organization, you don't just wake up and buy. There's a process that you have to follow, and this process will help you to be able to do A, B, C, and D. So that in the event we have an auditor who comes later, you'll be able to explain what happened, the, the trail that you used to bring that thing to use. Then we have technology. This is the application of scientific knowledge for practical purpose. So you can apply scientific knowledge. For example, the use of Microsoft or the use of systems like the e-procurement system, other systems like uh, the Oracle, the ERP system, the material requirement planning systems, very important. Then a uh, theory is a set of principles on which the practice of an activity is based. So here we are basing a practice of an activity. Give me an example of a theory that you know. Yes. An example of a theory that you know. Theory. 
I'm not getting you, yes? Hello, I'm not able to hear you. I'm asking any theory. Any theory, yes. Uh, any theory. Um, there was one in geography. Uh, uh, theory X and theory Y. Theory X and theory Y. This will be final management. Theory X and theory Y. I'm on the figure of management. Ah. Uh. Or So there's a theory called mm. theory X and theory Y. And it talks about the employee's attitude towards, towards work. So basically, those theories help you to understand various aspects within the organization. Then the last one is work. All activities which involve mental or physical efforts executed in order to achieve a purpose or a result. So when you are going to work, you have to achieve a certain purpose or you have to give a certain result. So the other thing we are going to look at is the importance of understanding the organization environment, the importance of understanding the organizational environment. So the environment provides resources that organization needs to create goods and services. So once you understand the organizational environment, then you as an organization, you will be able to create goods and services. And that is what controls most industries nowadays. If you don't have a product, you have a good, uh, you have a service. And a good is anything that is tangible and can be touched. For example, when you walk into a supermarket and you buy maize flour, that maize flour is considered a good. So once you understand this environment, organizations will be able to produce superior products and products that employees will like, products that employees will relate with, and products that employees will always buy again and again, or they will always make repeated purchase of those products. Services, on the other hand, these are items or these are uh, this is something or this is an activity that you do to another person that makes the other person feel uh, satisfaction. For example, when you look at, uh, when you go to a barber shop and the barber shop performs that activity to you, then you either feel satisfied or dissatisfied. The only big, uh, problem with services is that services services are indifferent. You can do a service to a person and that person will dislike the service, but you do another, the same same service to another person, then the other person likes the, the service. And that is why we are saying services are indifferent. So they are indifferent, or you cannot separate. What, what am I trying to say? What is good for me might not be good for the other person. You know? So services are relative, and satisfaction is relative. So what are the factors that influence the organizational environment? The organizational environment denotes internal and external environmental factors influencing organizational activities and decision making. So when you look at organizational factors, we look at two, two main factors where we have the internal factors and we have the external factors that affect the business <clears throat> decision making. Every organization, whether business or non-business, has, has its environment, which is always dynamic, 
and ever changing. So business environment keeps on changing. What, what worked for you yesterday might not work for you <coughs> today, or it might not work for you tomorrow. And that is why we, <coughs> we always encourage business to be creative and innovative and coming up with new ideas every day. So the forces that drive this change in business are known as internal and external environmental factors. So these factors are forces that affect how the business is operated. So there's a table here. There's a table here, just a minute. There's a table here. Are you able to see so to see it? Yes. So this is a, a, a form of environment. This is a form of environment where we have the inner core, which talks about the internal environment. And here we are looking at internal environment where we have the owner of the business and the owner is the one who brings finances or capital to the business. We also have the board of directors and these are the decision makers who make critical decisions within the organization. Then we have the employees. Employees are the driving force behind the business success and they are always treated as internal customers. Then we have issues like the culture, the way of life of that organization will also affect what happens within the organization. Then we also have the task environment. And the task environment, these are environments that the organization has little control or organization can easily manipulate them. For example, when you look at competitors, the organization can manipulate competitors by coming up with a superior product than, than them. Therefore, they will outdo the, the competitor. For example, regulators. Regulators is the government. The organization can decide to comply with the government regulation. And once they comply, then the government will not be on their neck. Then we have uh, strategic partners. These are partners who come together for a common purpose. For example, look at a company like Unilever. Once in a while, they join forces with other strategic partners to come up with a certain campaign that is geared towards increasing their market share or increasing their, their sales. So you can easily manipulate your strategic partners by ensuring that you all have a win-win situation. Then you have suppliers. Suppliers are the ones who support your business by bringing inventory to you, either raw inventory or finished inventory or work in progress <coughs> inventory. So you can support your suppliers by ensuring that you pay them in advance. And these suppliers will always support your business because they have a reason to smile because you're paying them. Then you have customers. You have customers. Customers here can be manipulated by ensuring that customers are able to get quality products. They are able to get discounts when they come to buy. They are always getting loyalty points and this will motivate customers to come again and again. Then the last environment here, we are talking about the general environment. And general environment here, we are looking at the macro environment or the external environment at large. And here we are looking at various factors or dimensions like the... like uh, the technological dimension, 
just a minute. So we are talking about the general environment and the general environment basically looks at the macro environment. And these are environments that sometimes are very critical when it comes to major decisions within the organization. And one of the environment here is the technological environment. Remember, we are in the era of technology and most companies have embraced technology for purposes of ensuring that they streamline their activities, which is geared towards uh, vision 2030 or 2050, depending on where they want to be. And the essence of technological dimensions is for purposes of ensuring that they have a, a, a far reaching impact when it comes to customers. They're able to reach customers from across the globe. And um, nowadays we have superior products when it comes to technology. And currently I was looking at uh, the issue of chat G, GBT, which is an artificial intelligence software that has been introduced. So this will become a game changer in most organizations. Then um, in 2020, we had some disruptions of in education sector and most companies who are in education were able to implement online learnings. So nowadays you don't have to go to class. You just need to be in the comfort of your house like what you are doing right now and teach, uh, receiving training from, from uh, your lecturers. Then uh, the other thing is economic dimension. And here we are looking at the global economy, which has experienced greater impact. And that is why when you look at Kenya today, the dollar has really gone up to around 20 shillings up, because it used to be 120. Right now we are talking about 146. So 20 shillings up. And that is affecting the businesses. And that is why when you walk into a supermarket today in Rongai, you find that one kilo of sugar goes at around 220 shillings and other products as well. So those are the, the economic dynamics that are affecting businesses. The, the global interest rates, the rate of inflation is high. And that is really affecting many people, the level of unemployment, people are not employed, and what have you. Then we also have social cultural dimension, different regions, different cultures, and it affects how people interact within businesses. For example, when you go to China, there's a way they behave, there's a way they interact, and that will affect businesses. For example, also when you go to these Islamic countries, there are some foods that they are not even allowed to, to, to eat and that can affect your business. Then um, the other thing is poli political legal dimension. And here we are looking at the political environment and you're also looking at the legal environment. And legal here, we are looking at the various regulations that are in place. And these regulations are very critical for business survival. And that is why businesses must be able to embrace or adapt or comply to some of those legal regulations. Then the political environment also, we are looking at how the political class is affecting businesses. And a typical example is in Kenya, where the political environment, where we have two, two parties that are fighting, and we have people who are, are affiliated to a certain party, then the others are affiliated to another party. 
And these also affect businesses and how they operate. And that is why businesses are always encouraged. For you to survive in a political environment, you are not supposed to engage or to be part of a certain political outfit or your business will be affected. Then the other one is international dimensions, international standards. For example, what are you supposed to do in terms of international labor organizations? What are you supposed to do? So those are some of the factors that are affecting businesses. For example, the international class or the global dimension, like they are advocating for LGBTQ and that will affect most businesses and how they operate. Any question? Uh -uh, no. No question. So let's jump into the internal environment. Let's, di let's dive in into the internal environment. So what is your understanding of the internal environment? This is the, those are events or factors or people, systems or structures and conditions that are inside the organization that are generally under the company's direct control. So here we are talking about events or factors or even people that the organization can be able to control. And they are in the confine of the organization within. So corporate mission, culture, and leadership styles are factors typically associated with organizational internal environment. For example, how the leadership is in an organization will affect many things. If you have a leader who encourages employees to be to be doing their best in the organization, compared to a leader who is a dictator, there is a level of uh, behavior that those employees will have. For example, the leader who encourages people to do their best will always receive positive feedback, whereas the others will feel they are being threatened and this might affect even their productivity within the organization. Then uh, issues like uh, the mission, every organization has a mission, what they want to achieve at the end of the day. And that mission is just a statement of assurance that gives employees what they are supposed to do to achieve their goals. So the mission is like a driving force that will push the organization towards realizing their vision. So there's a vision and there's a mission. What you want to achieve or the big picture. So the vision is the big picture and the mission basically gives you the leeway on how you're going to achieve the vision. Then the other important factor is culture. Culture. And culture here, we are talking about the way of life, a pattern of behavior that has been there over a period of time. So let's look at the, the various internal factors. And here, the first one is the staff. The staff are the employees who are very essential for business survival. And staffs must be taken care of. If you don't take care of your staff, then it means they will be demotivated. And once they are demotivated, then it will mean that they will not push themselves to their maximized potential. So they won't maximize their potential. Therefore, managers are encouraged to bring their employees closer so that they will understand them, they will know their talents, they will know what they what affects them, the internal conflict, and this will be very important for business survival. And one of uh, 
a researcher once said, if you don't take care of your employees, then the employees will have to take care of themselves. And that is why most organizations fail because of their employees who do not, are not motivated. They will steal from you. They will do everything possible to ensure that the organization goes down. Then the other thing is budget, which is also very important, which is an internal factor. So you need to set aside funds. And remember, funds will help you drive your business agenda. Budget will help you to hire the right people who will do the right job. Budget will help you to do your marketing well. Budget will help you to do your procurement. It will help you to pay your suppliers. Therefore, if an organization does not have enough fund or sufficient fund, then the business will not grow. The business will not expand. And this will affect the business, which finally will help the business to go down gradually. Look at Tuskies, for example. They do not have funds to support their business operations. They do not have funds to pay their suppliers, to pay their employees. What finally happened to their organization? It went down. Yeah. Yeah. Then uh, we have the corporate culture. Remember I said culture is a way of life. These are the values or the attitudes that employees have when it comes to various functionality within the organization. How do employees look at your organization? How do they value your organization? For example, if you go to government offices, there's a culture that is that is that they have. When it reaches lunchtime, they don't serve clients. And that is a very bad way of doing business. And that is why the government is not a profit-making organization. But their culture is very, very different. Look at a company like Safaricom. They have a very excellent culture, a culture of embracing their customers, a culture of embracing their, their employees. And this culture has led to a positive attitude of employees who are working for that organization. Then um, culture can shape or destroy your company. It can shape or destroy your company. Just a minute. Young is a magic way. So we are talking about a culture which is a very toxic culture. If you go to an organization and you find that everybody is stealing, what happens? That culture is very toxic. You will also start stealing and it will affect the overall profit of the organization. And this might lead even the, the organization to, to go down. Then if you go to an organization that they have a, a, a culture of teamwork, Everything that they do, they do as a team. And remember, when you are working as a team, you will be able to achieve a lot of things. Therefore, it means you will go far together when you work as a, as a team. Then, uh, external environment, external environment. Any question? No. No question. So hope you have enjoyed the class. Yes. So uh, today was just an introductory lesson. So next time when we meet, we shall start on the external environment, finish it, and go to the next topic, which is the organization. The I think began Ulkomandika. Pardon? The second topic is? Um, the next one, two. Mm -hmm.
foundation of organizational environment. Yeah. Can I yes. Um, can I get the node? These ones that are shared. Eh? Yeah. So I'll, I'll share them. Um, okay. I will share your email. Huh? I share my email. Uh, you do you have my number? I think I'm in the group. Huh? Oh, okay. Just inbox me. Then uh, I will share. What? What's the your number? Oh, my number. Oh, in the group. <laughs> The one that ends with six one six. Are you able to see it? Six one six. Yeah, I've seen it. Yeah, that's my number. Ah, oh, thank you. 